the enemy coming in. But really you can see it. the planes above us. All right, everyone. We uh, we have a great day scheduled for you today. And yeah, I, I would told like to, to open our time with my Canadian Liberty story. We've actually asked each one of our speakers to share about their Canadian story about liberty. So this would be um, a personal time, a time of We're on the steps of the Supreme Court building right now. I'll be speaking so shortly. So where my Canadian story began. My Canadian liberty story begins with my grandfather, George Oliver Baker. Grandpa Ollie enlisted in our Canadian army in the London barracks in Ontario in 1941. Yeah, they did a white one over here. He was then stationed in Deberg, Nova Scotia, and he married my grandmother, Olga, in August of 1942. Now, I'd like you to understand and hear this part of the story. And this is it, that three weeks after my grandfather and my grandmother were married. My grandpa Baker was sent overseas for three and a half years to fight for the freedom of our nation. He served as a private and worked in the motor pool, repairing tanks, trucks, machinery, and all of those types of things. He was also a motorcycle courier, taking messages and orders and reports all across Germany. My grandfather served as the Allies captured Sicily and invaded and liberated Holland. Can I get a cheer for the liberation of Holland? <laughs> my Canadian story of liberty continues with my father. Frank Thiessen, who is also a veteran. My father joined the Royal Canadian Air Force at the age of 18. He was an officer and pilot during the Cold War, and he served in France, Germany, and in Canada. Can I get a cheer for our Canadian forces that serve us abroad? <laughs> Snowbirds have decided to give us a show. Is that nice? Give them a cheer. <laughs> Friends, I have been concerned for the last year as to the disregard for liberty that my grandfather and my father fought in order to preserve. We read about the Second World War, if we read about the Cold War, indeed our national heroes have fought in order to preserve our freedoms that now our government and our medical communities trample upon. Yes. Are we gonna get one more pass? the national anthem that we used to sing 
And my second part of the Liberty story as I stand before you as the president of Liberty Coalition Canada, but also a pastor. My infatuation with liberty and peace comes from my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. When Jesus was born, the angels sang, Glory to God in the highest and peace on earth among those whom he is pleased. The Bible says that the name of Jesus is Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, and Prince of Peace. Yes. In the same way that God liberated the Israelites from slavery, Jesus came to liberate us from ourselves, yes. from our own sin, from those very things that sometimes we might look very far to other people and say it's their fault. When in reality, we must all take responsibility for our actions. And he offers us mercy. And that is why, historically, this country has declared Psalm 72, verse 8, which reads, May he, Christ, have dominion from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. Peace and liberty are fragile, my friends. And my prayer for the nation is that we will look to our heroes of the past. We will also stand firmly against evil. And that we will trust the Prince of Peace for his way in this land. Would you remove your hats and join me in a word of prayer? Dear Father in heaven, we sing our national anthem and forgive us for singing it in vain when we do not really mean the words, God, keep our land. Forgive us when we treat your name lightly. But today, on Canada Day, remembering our history, we ask you that you would, Lord Jesus, keep our land strong and free. Yes. And I say that with all sincerity. And those who join me in that prayer, I ask you to say amen, only if you say it with sincerity. But we all say it together, amen. Amen. Catch you again soon, friends.